Welcome to the Whitetail Watch produced by Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. We're airing on Wednesday, November 6th. And first, uh, I, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about the behavior and what we can expect in the week ahead. But I also want to talk about what temperature levels really affect the movement of the bucks during the rut. So we're gonna hear from our sponsors, and then we'll come back and take a look at these two topics. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Code of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail App, Whitetail Institute, Research Equals Results, B3 Releases, XO Broadheads, Exact Sights, Muddy Outdoors Tree Stands, Stealth Cam Trail Cameras, and Hoyt. Okay, so let's start with the forecast and then we'll dive into the rest of this. I'm seeing a pretty bland, kind of almost generic uh, type of a forecast. And that's why I thought the, the uh, topic I'm gonna come up with later might be super relevant here. I don't see very low lows at night and the daily highs are not very high. It's just kind of, um, at least throughout most of the central part of the United States, it's just kind of flat, you know, for the coming week and into the weekend especially. So I, I don't see anything in the weather forecast that jumps out at me. So the, the uh, rut phase and the behavior of the deer during this part of the season is going to be 100% the uh, factor that determines really how to hunt. Okay, so let's look at the behavior. You know, this time of the season, you're just going to get the more traditional, what I would call rut behavior. In fact, my favorite day of the season is November 7th. On average, I've had better hunts and I've talked to an awful lot of people who have their best hunts right around that day. You know, plus or minus a day or two. I've always said November 6th through November 8th, there's an awful lot of really good stuff that happens during that time frame, and that's right right around the corner. So assuming you're on vacation right now, uh, this should be prime time. The deer at this time are, the bucks at this time are still looking for does. They aren't locked down 100%. Some of them will be. You know, some of the bucks have a doe and they're gonna spend a day or two with that doe before they move on looking for the next one. But there's a certain percentage of them that don't have a doe that are looking for the next doe. All of the does aren't in estrus yet. It's still ramping up. There's, there's a limited supply of estrus does. And like I talked, you know, as you get into the central part of the rut, into the middle of the rut, and you hit that lull, then there's a higher percentage of the does that are in estrus and the bucks are tied up more. Um, so that's why the middle of the month can be slower in a lot of cases than um, the week that we've got coming up. So the strategy really should be about uh, as many all-day hunts as you can pull, this is the time for that. You know, I wouldn't be sitting out for any reason other than, you know, you have to. Uh, don't choose to sit out now. Uh, this is really what you've waited all the, all the whole year for this coming week. Uh, I would hunt near the doe bedding areas both morning and evening, but uh, you can hunt a little bit more aggressively towards the funnels between them and maybe even funnels between bedding areas and feeding areas uh, towards the evening. But I wouldn't get out on the field edges right now. I think the does have been harassed enough that uh, they're just not coming out into the open as freely as they were earlier in the rut. Uh, they don't like being chased around by every year and a half old buck that comes out of the brush. So they're mostly in hiding now, which puts them closer to the thick cover, closer to where they normally bed. And the bucks have to do a lot more physical searching to find them in those places. They can't just make a loop and say, okay, I know what's going on. They've got to go in and they've got to root through that brush and they've got to try to find them. So that's, uh, that's really the pattern I think that's gonna hold up pretty well during the week ahead. Hunt near the places where the does bed, hunt near the thicker cover, um, make the bucks come searching into those places and be waiting for them there. So let's talk about temperature now. I, I mentioned the fact that the, the weather forecast is pretty neutral, pretty flat. 
And that brings up the bigger question of what temperature, above what temperature, did the deer slow down their movement? And the only thing I've seen on this was a study that uh, Charlie Alzheimer, the late Charlie Alzheimer uh, did, gosh, I bet you it's been maybe 20 years ago that he did this. And it was pretty cool, pretty revolutionary at the time, but he had a network of people that were contributing information from their trail cameras. So it was basically a trail camera study throughout a big section of the United States where they were feeding him data, the number of deer they were seeing, the number of bucks they were seeing on their cameras um, corresponding to different temperature ranges. And what Charlie came up with was that the, the movement really didn't drop off very much until you got above 50 degrees. You know, the movement stayed pretty, pretty good and then you get above 50 and it starts tailing off. Well, if you look at the forecast ahead, uh, almost every day is right around that number. The nights or the evening temperatures, the lows, aren't really dropping very low. So you might say, oh, it's gonna to be too warm. We need you know, more frosty mornings. You don't really need frosty mornings to have rut action. You just can't have hot days, hot, humid days. Man, that just seems to shut everything down. But if you've got this sort of a flat, neutral 40s, 50s, um, you're gonna see the, the activity. It's gonna be comfortable to, to hunt. Um, you don't have to be out there in your heaviest clothes fighting the you know, 15 degree, 10 degree uh, wind chills, and the deer should still be moving. So kind of keep that in mind. And I'd like to see some more studies on that. Like I said, I've only seen the one that Charlie did, and I'd like to see something that maybe has been done by biologists over the years using the telemetry, you know, based on the GPS studies to see how much movement corresponds with different temperature ranges. Uh, but I'm encouraged by the forecast ahead. I'm excited about this time frame. I'm gonna spend as much time as I can in the tree. And like I said, that's really the pattern that should prevail right now. Hunt as much as you can, hunt close to where the does are concentrated, and you should have a pretty good week. Well, I appreciate you joining me. I'll see you back here again next week for the next episode of the Whitetail Watch produced by Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big.